G'day, I'm Paul. Toyota Hybrids, they have a huge wait time at the moment, but there are other brands now that are rolling out hybrids, especially in the SUV segment. One of them is Hyundai. This is the new Hyundai Kona Hybrid. They've also rolled out an electric, which we will review at some point as well. But I thought, let's get behind the wheel of this and see how it compares to a Toyota Hybrid. They're kind of the leaders in this segment. This is the mid-spec. It's called the Endline. It's priced at $40,000. If this is too expensive, the whole range kicks off at 36 grand for the hybrid trim. This competes with stuff like the uh, Havel Jolion, uh, also the Toyota Corolla Cross. It's that type of vehicle with a hybrid drivetrain. Now, today we are going to do a review of this, but it's not going to be super detailed because we already reviewed a Kona N-Line just with the 1.6 turbo, and it has the same sort of features inside the cabin. So if you do want to check that video out, I've left a link in the description below. Today, we'll just touch on some of those points, but not go into too much detail. We'll focus more on how this drives. Now, if you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes that are on the screen, or if you're on YouTube, you can scroll down and use the chapters below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we review a tennis ball. Okay, so let's talk about the design. Your solid colors free of charge, optional colors are just under 600 bucks. This is an out there design. I've seen a few of these on the road now, and in it really stands out, especially in N-Line trim. You cannot accuse Hyundai of making boring looking cars at the moment. Whether you like the look of them or not, I think is a probably uh, a different question, but styling is subjective, so that's entirely up to you. Um, so down the front here, you've got that uh, new Hyundai logo that's sort of similar to the Kia one where they've shaved off a piece of sort of aluminium, sort of stuck it on the bonnet there, it looks cool. Big LED light that stretches all the way along the front of the car there. You've got piano black through this middle section. N-line badge just there, full LED headlights. If we come around to the side here, you've got 19s on uh, the petrol or non-hybrid version of the uh, N-line, whereas here they're 18s for the hybrid. I suspect that's for fuel economy, so we'll see whether that affects the handling as well. I don't know if uh, it's going to make too much of a difference, but um, we'll see what happens. Uh, another N-line badge there, you've got roof rails, no privacy glass, you really have to step up to the top spec to get all of the bells and whistles. The end line kind of sits in the middle there. Come around to the back with me. I still can't get over this spoiler and the diffuser. Look at it. It is enormous. It's like it's a you know top fuel dragster or something. And a giant diffuser down the bottom there as well with those twin uh, N exhaust pipes as well. You get a hybrid badge there too, so everyone knows you're trying to save the planet. Uh, Kona just under the Hyundai badge there as well. And then a red strip that runs all the way along the back there too. So let me know what you reckon about the design of the Kona in the comments section below. Do you like the look of it? Do you think they've gone a little bit too far? And would you get it in tennis ball green? I'm keen to know. So we are inside the tennis ball. This is what the key looks like. You've got lock, unlock, remote start. You've got a button there to push and hold for the boot. It is a Hyundai logo. Um, and then this is a proximity sensing key, so you can just grab the door handles and then you've got a push button start just there. Uh, like I said in the intro, um, this I'm just going to touch on the features here. If you do want a more detailed look at this, just click on the review of this exact same coloured car, but non-hybrid <laughs> that I've left in the description below. Um, so head of the driver, you've got a big display. Infotainment is a big display as well. Really nice and easy to use. This has connected services as well, which means you can connect into the car with your phone and you also have uh, remote connectivity and an SOS button up here as well. If anything ever goes pear-shaped uh, within the actual infotainment system as well, you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, quality of those is, is great. They sort of take up that full display there with no dramas at all and very easy to use. So uh, pretty impressed with that. On the radio front, you've got AM, FM and DAB digital radio and and it's a six speaker sound system. Sound system's okay, uh, but sort of nothing, uh, nothing too sort of crash hot. Um, outside of that, it's also pretty straightforward. Um, you do have uh, another screen here that we didn't have on the the sort of non-hybrid version of this, and that is the hybrid screen. So it actually gives you a live display of where it's plumbing energy uh, or where energy is coming from. It also gives you your fuel economy and how much of the electric motor you're using, which is pretty cool. So I'm keen to see what that is like when we go for a little bit of a drive. Um, yeah, so uh, not a bad infotainment system. Now, ahead of the driver as well, you've got another digital display. It, it has a couple of bits of customization, but for the most part, it's fairly static with speed on the left and then critical uh, information on the right-hand side. Uh, and then that all changes when you switch between drive modes as well. As you move yourself down here a little bit further, you've got dual zone automatic climate control. All of this is, um, 
I don't know, very sort of futuristic looking. So they've got those flush buttons along here. There's no piano black here as far as I can tell, which is excellent news. And I do love the innovation down here, being able to switch between charging and USB for these ports, and then also the 12 volt that's hidden behind there. So that's a really cool sort of setup. You will know that you've bought the mid-spec because it is missing uh, three, or actually three, five buttons down here. Uh, next to the drive mode, so um, yeah, that's a little bit, eh, but um, it is what it is. Storage-wise, you've got cup holders that get out of the way. The only thing I wasn't a huge fan of here was you've got this storage area, but there's no uh, cover for it. So if you do have any valuables there, you can just see directly inside the car at what you've got hidden there. So it would be nice to have just a little door on that or some way of concealing what's there. I did see something interesting just while I was poking around before. There's a button over here that says 12 volt bat reset. So it seems here that if the car shuts down due to low, low voltage, you can actually reset the 12 volt system by pushing that. I've never seen that on any other car, so it's quite fascinating. Gear stick is over here next to the steering wheel, so you just rotate that to move between uh, reverse drive, park, and neutral. And then on top of that, you've got storage down here with glove box. You've got uh, N stripes here on the seats, bit of Alcantara perforations there as well. So it is a nice place to be seated. And when you look at the price tag, 40 grand, uh, if this drives well, which I'm hoping it does as a hybrid, uh, this feels like a $40,000 car. Jumping into the second row, there's enough room there for adults. This car has actually become bigger. It's longer, wider, it's on a bigger wheelbase. So that means you are afforded more room as an adult in the second row as well. And it's got your standard creature comforts like USB-C connection ports. And uh, yeah, that is the Hyundai Kona inline. Now, cargo space. Let's have a little sticky beak in here. You got just over 400 liters to work with. Bit of storage off to the sides there. You got some hooks there as well. Space saver spare tire. That's not a bad space. Um, all right, so bags, let's see what it looks like. So there's laptop bag and our suitcase. Yeah, that all fits in. Yeah, nice. Um, you can expand the space a little bit as well just by dropping the second row. By doing that, uh, it opens the space up to 1,241 litres. Okay, so we've just hit the road in the Kona. I'm going to point this out because I just, just every car these days seems to have these annoying features. But literally as you drive out, it starts beeping at you. So first it was because I wasn't paying attention, even though I was. And second it was because I was speeding, even though I wasn't. So you have to go into the settings menu. This is every single time you start the car. Go into the settings menu, manually switch off all of that annoying stuff, and then start your drive. I just think that stuff has to go. I just don't know why it's mandated as safety tech when it's actually not safe at all. And that is just across all brands. So anyway, grumble, grumble, got that off my chest. Now, uh, let's talk about the Kona hybrid. So one of the things I love about uh, Toyota hybrids, and I'll compare this to a, to to a Toyota hybrid because it is a segment leading when it comes to this tech, is that it sets off on electric, internal combustion engine kicks on, and you really don't notice anything happening. I'll run you through the, what's under the bonnet here and then we'll test whether this is the case as well. So this uses an internal combustion engine, so a 1.6 litre naturally aspirated petrol engine. That engine alone makes 77 kilowatts of power and 144 newton metres of torque. So not much at all, it is a tiny little engine, but it is mated to an electric motor that produces uh, 32 kilowatts of power and 172 newton metres of torque. Now they combine to produce a peak output of 104 kilowatts of power and 265 newton meters of torque. I've just thrown a whole bunch of numbers at you there. But in essence, what it means is that you have the ability for that smaller engine to charge a little battery. Here it's under two kilowatt hours in terms of size, and then that runs an electric motor, but it doesn't consume a whole amount of energy, which means that it's constantly discharging and recharging. That also means that you're not adding a huge amount of weight to the vehicle, and you're also not limited like you are with a battery electric vehicle on range. Well, you are, you will run out eventually, but it means that you can keep refueling this and keep driving. So what does all that feel like? So it's all mated to a six-speed dual clutch transmission. Normally I'm not a fan of those, but let's see how well it works here when we set off. So that's in electric mode and still in electric mode. And there's the internal combustion engine. That is nice. That is very Toyota-like, so uh, pretty impressed with that. So what does it all feel like if you do want to get stuck into it? So I'll just nail the throttle here at 50 k's an hour. 
It's not too bad. So it pretty much gives you instant response from the electric motor, and I'm sort of looking at my screen here while we're driving. It gives you instant response from that because you've got the battery available immediately, and then the internal combustion engine sort of starts powering along as well to move everything. And I do like that even at times like this where I'm only lightly on the throttle, the internal combustion engine is off and we're just using the battery to drive the vehicle. So all of that sort of adds up pretty nicely. Now let's talk fuel economy. So Hyundai claims a combined fuel economy of under four litres per 100 k. So that is Toyota rivaling in terms of the claim. What we're actually achieving is closer to, if I flick through here, since refueling, since last reset, 5.7 k's an hour. So that is a mix of uh, city and highway driving and then over here at the Proving Grounds. So fair way off the claim, still a decent fuel economy figure, so don't get me wrong there, but it is a little bit off the claim. So uh, I think that is a bit of a furphy, but I would like to see what this is like on a longer term average. So if you are, or if you do own one of these, let us know what it's like in terms of economy after driving it for a little while. Now, in terms of the ride, so uh, Hyundai stopped its local ride and handling tuning program a little while back. Uh, Kia still does it, Hyundai doesn't, and you can kind of tell because it feels like a very generic tune. It's very soft and you know, it's fine in and around the city, but what you do find is that when you sort of get those consecutive motions, and we'll check this in a second when we go over the sine waves, it just lacks that body control. And uh, I suspect if it lacks it there, it's gonna lack it when we go for a faster drive as well. Okay, sine wave time, let's get up to 130. Let's see what it's like over the sine waves. Whoa! Oh, that is massively boaty. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, you, you can tell they've just gone with a fairly generic tune there because uh, once you reach the peaks of the sine waves there, it really doesn't have a huge amount of body control, which is just a little bit disappointing. Okay, bumpy road time, so we do this at 90 k's an hour. It's a shocker of a road, but it also has high frequency sine wave on it as well. So we can see what the body control's like. So there's 90 k's an hour. Yeah, given the ride is so soft, it actually soaks up this stuff really nicely. So if you live in an area with stacks of potholes, it's going to be good. All right, here comes the sine wave. Yeah, it's not too bad over that. It is pretty floaty. It sort of sends the car around a bit, but um, for the most part, it's actually quite comfortable. Now, drive modes, we have Eco, Sport and Snow. Let's pop it into Sport, go for a lap of our track and see what it's like. Given this is an inline, it must be pretty, pretty quick and snappy. So there on the throttle, it feels pretty good. And our first corner here, not a bad amount of traction there. It's actually moving along pretty nicely, which is surprising. The steering feel is pretty good. See what it's like once the battery runs down. Um, obviously, not everyone's gonna be driving like this, but we test all of the cars back to back in the same way, just to see what they feel like. Oh yeah, so it wallows heaps there. Mid corner bumps because of the softness of the ride. It sort of just throws the car about a bit. It is actually sort of doing an okay job here. Yeah, look, it's okay. It's just, um, yeah, once that battery runs low, it really runs out of steam there, and um, you're kind of just left with a, an engine that has under 100 kilowatts of power to keep it moving. So um, I guess that is something to keep in mind. They have made it an end line, but if you can only do one lap of the track here and the battery runs out, um, it's probably not really overly suitable. Now let's talk about road noise. Uh, we used our calibrated sound meter to measure how much noise there is in the cabin at 80 and 100 k's an hour on both smooth and coarse chip surfaces. It is bloody noisy in here. Uh, I mentioned this in our last Kona review. I don't know why it is so noisy inside the cabin, but there is a stack of noise coming in here from the tyres, which isn't very pleasant or inviting. Uh, if you do want to see how this car has compared to other cars that we've tested before, have a look at the link in the description below. One thing I will point out that, that I like is that you can actually use the paddles here to adjust the amount of regen that you have. So it's typically not something that you find in a, in a hybrid vehicle. You find it on a lot of battery electric vehicles or plug-in hybrids, but I do love the fact that you can actually control that and plumb a bit more energy back into the battery while you are slowing down instead of using the, the mechanical braking system. Now, not that you're gonna to be towing anything with this, but 1300 kilogram brake towing capacity and turning circle of 10.6 meters, so nice and tight. Let's talk visibility. 
visibility. So I can see clearly down the front of the vehicle there, down the sides, it's fine. Uh, the, I don't know, the rear view mirror is fine as well. It's sort of a narrow envelope, but sort of visibility is pretty clear there. And in terms of parking, decent reverse view camera, so it's sort of fairly easy to place in and around traffic. And then you've got your blind spot monitor built into the wing mirror as well. Okay, time to do a little bit of performance testing. Before we do that, I want to tell you about our website, carexpert.com.au. Head to our website to see a stack of uh, other car content, comparisons with things like this and other vehicles. And we can also connect you in with one of our vetted dealers as well to get you a good deal on a car. You can also call us for advice as well if you want, it's all free. Um, okay, so there are no sort of official zero to 100 figures here, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna measure it. We're gonna go all the way through to 120. We'll pop this into uh, sport mode. Yeah, we'll go all the way through to 120. Does this thing load up? Oh, it doesn't look like it. Uh, so I'm just going to stand on the throttle and we'll see what happens. I'll turn traction control off because it just rained a little bit and uh, we'll see how we go. All right. Yeah, it's not too bad off the line there. All right. There's almost 100. Ooh. And 120. All right. Come to a stop. It took a little while to get there. Okay, so let's have a look. So 0 to 100, 10.4 seconds. Not the fastest thing in the world. And then 7.93 seconds from 80 to 120. So yeah, not lightning fast. Um, so yeah, I think that is probably something worth keeping in mind. I remember when we tested the 1.6 turbo, that felt a whole lot more urgent and, and willing to sort of get up and move. So this just needs that little bit more pep, but I think for a hybrid, it's, it's, it's fine. Okay, now it's time to do a stop from 100 k's an hour. See how good the brake and tyre package is. All right, here we go. That felt interesting. Um, the, the car lurched like that as if the rear wheels left the ground. I'll have to have a look at the um, replay to see if that was the case, but... Wow, yeah, it stopped sort of fairly quickly, but it sort of felt like it jumped forward there. So let's have a look here, 100 to zero. 2.84 seconds and 39.24 meters. So, okay, but not amazing. And uh, it is worth noting, it did uh, rain during our break there. So it is slightly damp on the ground there, which probably explains why it didn't stop as quick as it could have. Now it's time for our <laughs> reverse test. See how quick it goes in reverse. Here we go. Okay, so got be modest uh, 34 kilometers an hour. So, Hyundai Kona Hybrid, what do we reckon? Look, my conclusion for this, funnily enough, is almost the exact same as my conclusion for the 1.6 Turbo that we drove. Um, this, I don't think, is bef befitting of the N brand. When they put N line on this, I mean, this just doesn't work. It doesn't handle like a, an N vehicle should. Uh, the Hybrid certainly runs out of puff when you're trying to sort of get up it and have fun. Uh, so, I, I just think buying this as an N line is probably not the smartest thing to do. I'd buy it either at the base model or at the top spec. Then at least you're not having any notions of it's uh, sort of being sporty. And it doesn't have to be sporty because it is a hybrid. You don't need to have a sporty vehicle in this segment. How does it compare? At the start, I said, how does it compare to a Toyota hybrid? Well, fundamentally, the system actually works really well. Where it is different though, is the fuel economy. We constantly almost you know, as night follows day and, and day follows night, we hit Toyota's fuel economy claims in their hybrids. Whereas this was quite a way off being, what, 3.9 litres per 100 k's. So I'm curious to see what this would be like on a longer drive, but I think that uh, even though the tech works well, it's probably not quite as refined as what Toyota has. So I think uh, what I'm trying to say here is if you are buying one of these, don't bother with the N-Line unless you want it for the looks. Uh, just don't expect it to handle like an end model or anything like that. And that this is best served as either an entry level vehicle or a top spec vehicle. And that's where you're gonna get value for money. If you are waiting for a Toyota and you wanna switch, this is going to be a fantastic alternative that is going to be available much sooner than a Toyota anyway. Now, did you enjoy this video? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section below. Have you bought one of these? What's it like in terms of long-term economy as well? I'm curious to find out. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure you like it and you share it with your mates. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. But until next time, take it easy.